Ricky Flint, Wildlife Coordinator, Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks, and the uh, official Alligator Program Coordinator, who is coming to you live from an alligator pond in his backyard, by the way. Morning, Ricky. How are you, sir? It's good to have you. Good Good morning. It's been a while. I hadn't talked to you in a while. Yeah. I'm telling you because, you know, you, you guys always get that star treatment with the whole program a little bit later. But I thought, let's get Ricky in. This is uh, the date on this one is September, coming up September, as far as the next season. Uh, the season always starts on the last Friday of August. August, okay. And and it goes for how yep. long? Ten days. And this year it will be ending on Labor Day. All right, now, any changes, Ricky, from last year, or are the rules and regulations about the same thing as last year? Yeah, so the alligator season, there's there have been no changes this year. Uh, mm-hmm. In fact, we haven't made any significant changes in about three or four years now. Everything's rolling real smooth. The application process, in fact, the application process starts uh, next Wednesday at 10 a.m. We'll start taking those applications electronically through our website and uh that'll go for eight days through june 8th uh last year we had about six thousand uh applicants for the 960 available permits wow so you're nowhere the uh, there were six thousand is that going up or down as far as a year to year as far as the request it's it's going up slightly every year yeah. uh i think about Three years ago, we were in the 41, 4,500 applications, and it went up to 6,000 last year. I'm just wondering how things very have changed. Yes. How many years have we been doing this now? Uh, first year was 2005, so I guess this is the 18th, 19th year. Oh, I can't oh, be the math. Crazy. I can't even believe it's been yeah. that long, but you are absolutely right. I'll bet you have some stories to tell, too. Uh, over the over oh, I do. since two thousand, a lot of them we can't talk about here on the radio. <laughs> yeah. Now, see, here's where I plan for this thing, but my whole brain is telling me you got to tell me one of the stories. I got to hear one of the stories where it would come under the headlines. You can't fix stupid, I'm sure, but 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 if you can share one of the stories, we'd all appreciate it. We're <laughs> gathered around the camp. We're all gathered around the campfire across the state, waiting for Ricky to give us at least one story. Uh, I can remember back in 2005. Uh, we we used to have a mandatory training course in 2005, mm-hmm. being the very first year. Um. Uh, We took applications, and we drew about 50 people to hunt just a small section of the river there north of Ross Burnett Reservoir. And uh, everybody gathered up for the training course, took about four hours long. And I remember uh, we had a gentleman there. After the training course was over, uh, we took some questions. He raised his hand. He said, so I've I've got one question. He said, uh, so you're telling me that I have to take a rod and reel and throw a hook over this alligator, cast it over his back, hook him, and reel him into the boat before I can shoot the alligator? <laughs> I said, yes, sir. And he was speechless. Uh, mm-hmm. And and the, the case in point here is, is that a lot of people may not realize is we, we're not allowing people to just go out onto the waterways and just shoot high-powered rifles or any firearms for that matter, out across the alligators. Uh, yeah. It's a much safer environment than that. They And they indeed do have to capture the alligator first. It must be restrained by a noose or a snare around the alligator's head or at least one leg where the alligator's controlled and can't get away. And then we allow them to take a shotgun out of the case, uh, load it with a round of bird shot, and uh, place it close to the spine just behind the head and discharge the farm, which was a very quick, and safe, humane uh, euthanasia for the alligator. And it's it's very safe, and it's very safe for the people yeah. who are out on the waterway. Ricky Flint's the wildlife coordinator, and he's the guy in charge of the uh, alligator program coordinator who's been uh, with us all these years. And, and man, it's turned into a, a big event. And, you know, I, I, I remember a time when uh, the, were they on the endangered species at one particular time as far as alligators are concerned? I mean, the, you used to be able to buy them in, in uh, 
in the uh, in the department store. I'm not sure if it was Woolworth or at some of the fairs. You could get a little alligator, and then they stop that, and then you almost like turtles, but you right. can't do it. You couldn't do it after a while. But we had uh, we had some restrictions. Yeah. On. So yeah, they were put on the endangered species list in 1967, which is about the time Amazing. you're talking about. And they, and you could. Mm-hmm. There were no regulations against having them, killing them, uh, selling them, and having them as pets, and that was quite a problem. But uh, then, uh, with the protection that was afforded it across the entire range in the southeastern United States, it, it quickly rebounded, and it was taken off the endangered species list in 1987, and the mm-hmm. uh, Mississippi Alligator Control Program was initiated uh, by the Mississippi legislature in 1989 is when this program got started. When you when you look at the the processing part when they first started uh, harvesting some of these to now has the processing changed? Is there more opportunity for that, or what do they do with the alligators? Uh, it's it's changed a little bit, although. The commercial market for wild alligators has just plummeted to almost nothing. Mm -hmm. Uh, The really only market that's out there is for the alligator meat. The hide used to be, uh, even back around 2005, was bringing about $52 a foot. Uh, Right now it's bringing anywhere from $5 to $12 a foot, uh, if you can find a market that will actually buy them. Um, And with the popularity of alligator hunting in Mississippi. We have uh, had on occasion uh, a few locations here in the state uh, that uh, have buyers on hand that will uh, process your alligator, uh, take the hide, and resell it uh, on the commercial market. So uh, I don't know how much better that's going to get with the economy the way it is, Uh, but uh, we we try our best, and uh, we try to, yeah. Wonder if anybody's ever mounted one, as far as you know, a taxidermist. Oh yeah, we, uh, I know for really? a fact uh, we had uh, some local hunters here in the uh, Jackson area. Uh, the Ratcliffs uh, uh, once caught uh, alligator that it was uh, a little over 13 feet on the Pearl River, and they had a full body mount. It used to be at the uh, Canton Farm Equipment. Uh, really? And it's they <laughs> still have that. Yeah, we we get I'm a good hunting. bit of that. Um, <laughs> Ooh. Most of the hunters will, you know, harvest the alligator, uh, take the hide and make something out of it, uh, taxidermy mm-hmm. the head, uh, retain the meat for consumption, uh, and make, you know, all ki- types of crazy table yep. fare out of the alligator meat. It, they get used. Well, the other, yeah, the other thing about this, too, is that the, I heard a story on a couple of people as they became more and more proficient or some of them that did not realize what they were getting into in the middle of the darkness, uh, yelling out, we're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. and I, there. I, I think, especially on the Ross Barnett, man, I, I listen, I've fished there so many years that I, I could tell you where the gators and which coves, and you see the same ones over and over, but some of those monsters were just unbelievable. Thinking about getting in, into right. a boat is, uh, is, is a task. Well, there is a huge learning curve if you've never been involved mm-hmm. in it before. We we publish an alligator hunting guide that pretty much is the Bible that uh, they can go by. It's got just about every piece of information that they could use. We also have a series of uh, training videos on our website, mdwfp.com. Mm-hmm. We have an alligator training course there. It's 11 videos that basically cover everything from basic biology to how to capture your alligator, how to process it, and how to do the harvest reporting. Always good to talk to you, sir. I appreciate it. Uh, I was worried maybe we didn't have enough people to fill that, but if we got 6,000, <laughs> you're taken care of. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll look forward to this yeah. year's event. Ricky, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Sir, Get very, your very application much. in June 1st, starting at 10 a.m. June 1st, right around the corner. Thank you, Ricky. Appreciate it. Ricky Flint, All right, wildlife thank you coordinator. All. You got it. Department of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks Alligator Program. He said July, uh, June 1st, so get your applications in if you want a chance to allocate.